Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Maytag dryer retaining clip. It's going to be a very easy repair. It should only take us a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new retaining clip. The retaining clip goes on the end of the roller axle and it actually holds the roller onto the axle. The main reason you'd be changing it is if it's damaged, broken, or you lost it. In order to get to the part, we have to open up the dryer door and then we can remove it from the dryer with a Phillips screwdriver. We're going to remove these two screws that hold the door hinges onto the frame. Once you have those two screws out, you can lift the door off the pins and set it aside. Now that we have the door out of the way, we can take out the Phillips screws on the other side of the frame and the little retaining brackets will come off with them. Once we have those off, we can take off the front panel. In order to get the front panel off, all you have to do is grab it right here below the top and pull it outwards. That will release these clips and then you have to lower it down far enough so you can lift it off the front brackets. Then you can set it aside. Next we can take off these brackets. There's one on each side. We're going to use a 5 16 nut driver to take these bolts out and then we can remove these brackets. You just have to kind of lift them off a little tab right there and turn them to the outside so they come out. Now we can lift the top up and rotate it over the back of the dryer. In order to get the outside panel off, we have to remove the screws that hold it in. There's three screws on each side. One screw on each side has a cutout going around it. We're not going to take that one out. We're using our 5 16 inch nut driver to take these out. All right, now that we have those screws out, we can lift this outer panel off. And if you have room, you can swing it out of the way. Otherwise, you can disconnect the wires on the door switch. Just remember where each one goes. Double yellow is here. The gray is in the middle. This one's actually a smaller size terminal, so you can't mix it up. And the white one is on closest part to the metal. And then you can take that and set it aside. Last thing we want to do is get these wires out of the way so we can pull the other front bulkhead off. We're going to disconnect the two wires on the light bulb. They're different size terminals, so you don't have to remember where they go. Once you have the wires off the light socket, all you have to do is bend this little retaining bracket, and we can get the wires out. Now we can remove these last two screws that hold in the front bulkhead. We're using our 5 16 nut driver. Before you take the last one out, you may want to put your hip against here so it doesn't fall off. And then we can take this and set it aside. To remove the belt, we're going to stick our left hand in through here and grab the idler pulley and lift it up towards the outside of the machine so we can take the belt off. Now that we have the belt off the pulleys, we can lift up on it and use it to lift the drum and guide it out of the dryer. The retaining clip is used on multiple places inside the dryer. It's used on the end of the motor shaft to hold the blower wheel on, and it's also used on the end of each shaft that holds the rollers on. In order to take the retaining clip off, it's easiest to do it with a snap ring pliers. If you don't have one of these or you can't borrow one from a friend, you can always use a small screwdriver and get behind one of the tabs, not the other one. You can kind of twist it and get the retaining clip started so you can pull it off. It's not that hard, just be careful you don't bend the retaining clip. We're going to use our snap ring pliers because it's easier and take it out. Here's the old retaining clip next to the new one. 
If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the retaining clip on, we're going to use our snap ring pliers. And you want to spread it just enough to get it over the end of the shaft so you don't tweak it. And then you can release it and make sure that it snaps into the groove on the shaft. Then you can take the snap ring pliers off. To put the drum back in, we're going to lift up by the belt and line it up with the little cutouts inside of the frame and slide it back into place. Same as when we took the belt off, we're going to reach in with the left hand, grab the idler pulley and pull it up so we can route the belt through the pulleys. Now we can go ahead and put the front bulkhead back on. We're going to swing it into place, lift up the drum, make sure it sets onto the tumbler bearings, and then we can set it down and put in the two kitty corner screws that hold in the bulkhead. We're going to use our 5 16 nut driver and put the screws back in. Now that we have that on, we can reconnect the wires to the light switch. It's the, uh, the blue and the gray one. So run them up. Clip them onto their little clip, and then we can reconnect them. Remember, they're different sizes, so you can't mix them up. Now we can put on the outer frame. First, we have to hook up the door switch. The double yellow one went on top. The smaller terminal with the gray wire went in the middle, and then the white wire was the bottom one. Now that we have those on, we can swing the panel around. We can use our 5 16 inch nut driver and put the other four screws in. Now we can lower the top back down and secure it in place. Remember we have to put the locking bars in. You want to make sure that the hooks point outwards. Once you have it in place, we're going to use our 5 16 nut driver again. Now we can put the front panel back on. You want to take in, set it onto the two little retaining tabs down there, and then lift it up into place. In order to make sure it snaps closed, you want to make sure that the locking tab goes into this hole. Next, we can put on the screws with the little locking tabs on the right-hand side. On the other side, we have to put the door back on. So we have to make sure that these little tabs go into these slots on both the upper and lower hinge. And then we can put the screws back in. Now that you're done repairing the appliance, you can plug it back in and give it a whirl. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.